Hi guys, this is Viper with another video review. And today we're going to be looking at the Duke Nukem Forever Balls of Steel Edition for the PC. Now I'd like to spend a little bit of time <clears throat> giving my thoughts and views on the game itself. Uh, I, like many, I'm sure, uh, went on their computers on June 10th, I believe it was, when the reviews started coming out for this game, and I was quite surprised that, you know, pretty much all of these major gaming outlets like IGN and GameSpot and these different places were giving this game such a horrible, horrible score. I mean, actually, a lot of people cite IGN as a bad score, but they're, they gave it a 5.5. There are other places that gave this game like a 2 and a 3. Now... Honestly, I think the biggest problem you've had with this game overall, without counting anything specifically in it, is the hype train. Now, after 14, you know, 12, 14 years in development, obviously the hype train is going to be huge, and Gearbox obviously capitalized on it with the trailers we got, uh, you know, uh, the, in the months coming up to the release. I mean, some of those trailers were really cool, and they really made, they really whet my appetite for the game. And then, you know, then when that demo came out, people's hopes were completely dashed because the demo was essentially an early version of the game and a lot of it hadn't been polished and there really wasn't a lot to do and it was very short. Now, honestly, I think part of what helped me with this game is even though I was really anticipating it, I didn't have a lot of very high expectations for it. In terms of games today, we have a lot of games that are very good you know, but they're pretty much focusing solely on serious matters. Like you have Assassin's Creed, an excellent game. I, I love Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood especially. But, and I can't wait for Revelations. But the, pr pretty much the background of that game is essentially a government conspiracy, a shadow government. And, you know, a call, the Call of Duties and the military shooters are all about, you know these what-if coups and these what-if military scenarios where the United States is attacked or, you know, Europe is attacked or whatever. And while a lot of those games are very good and have very good plot lines, I'm, I'm a history buff and I'm a political science guy. So I am inundated daily with real-life conspiracy theories, real-life issues, real-life problems that need to be addressed. And sometimes, you know... I don't, I'm not, I'm a casual gamer. I'm not a big obsessive game player. But when I do play a game, a lot of times, especially if there's a lot of political stuff going around that I'm involved in, I really would like a game that's just simple, stupid, and fun. And honestly, that's all I expected this game to be. A fun game with Duke one-liners, you know, stupid jokes, and that's it, honestly. Now, there's been some of the complaints. I mean, I'm not going to go as in depth as some of the other reviewers because, you know, everybody's heard this already. But there's a lot of complaining about that there's not enough shooting, that there's too much interactive stuff. I honestly think that's a positive. It, the game is not perfect by any means. But I think that's actually a positive that this game tried to incorporate a lot of different things. There is shooting, but there's also a lot of interactivity, there's a lot of puzzle solving which a lot of people think is unduke, but, you know, I don't see what the hell the difference is. You know, they kind of try to incorporate some driving sequences. Now, they're not perfect. I mean, you're not going to get Gran Turismo or Forza-style driving, uh, driving physics with this game. But at least it was good, in my opinion, in varying what you did. So it's not just the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, two of the other big complaints that there are is the two weapon limit the well three actually the two weapon limit the regenerating health and the line the linearness of the game now the two weapon limit and the regenerating health is all personal opinion as far as i'm concerned i honestly couldn't care less i think that it's actually a little more strategic only having the two weapons and the regenerating health is something that i've become used to i mean very few games now actually have you looking for medkits anymore it's mostly all uh, regenerating health now. And in terms of the game being linear, I'll agree with that. But most first-person shooters are. I mean, I've played almost all of the Call of Duties, and they're all pretty linear. And 
it's barely even mentioned in their reviews and they get high scores. Even Fear 3. Now that game looks pretty interesting. But in that review, it got an 8.0 and they were complaining that it was linear. But this but it got an 8.0. Now, yeah, okay, that game I'm sure is a lot more polished even though they did complain that the graphics in that weren't up to par either. That game probably is a little more polished. It's it, it it's a specific genre, meaning the horror genre. So I'm sure it does things much better than that. I haven't played the game yet, so I'm not trying to knock the game. I'm not trying to disfear at all. I've played the first two; they're pretty good. But I'm just saying, for some reason, the linearness of this game was like holy crap! It was the game breaker for this one. But yet, all these other games that are coming out that are just as linear, they braze over it. Now, one thing I also have noticed is that uh, most of these reviewers are reviewing the console version of this game. Now, I own the PC version, and I've played through it, and honestly, I have not come across any graphical problems. The game runs seamlessly for me, anyway. But the console version, I've heard, and I've played, actually, a couple levels of the PlayStation version. The graphics are definitely dumbed down. And there are a lot of texture pop-in problems. And this, I've only played two, like two levels of the PlayStation 3 version, and I saw this. And honestly, I fully agree with the reviewers when it comes to the graphical presentation of this game and all of the problems the game is having. I fully agree with them on the console version because it's obvious that they rushed the ports for this game just to get them out. Which, honestly, Assassin's Creed 2, I know the console versions came out, I think it was a month or two before the PC version. And you know what? Both versions sold, and sold pretty well. So I think what they should have done is release this game for the PC, which is the, the, the system it was being developed for for all these years anyway, and take a little extra time, polish up the, P, the, um, the console ports, and the game probably would have looked a lot better on the consoles as well. Pretty much, I think all in all what it comes down to is people need to realize this game is not Duke Nukem 3D. Duke Nukem 3D is still the best of the Duke games, without a doubt. But Manhattan Project got railed on actually more so in the user community than in the reviews of actual gaming companies because it wasn't this game, and it wasn't this game. Now, that game, I'll agree, is very boring after a while. I love the game. I actually made a site for it a while back. But I will admit the game it does get very repetitive by the time you get about halfway through the game because there's not a very varied gameplay. Honestly, I would probably give this game for the PC, I would honestly give it about a 6.5 to a 7. Now, yes, I am a fan of Duke Nukem, but I honestly enjoyed the game. And there are so many arguments, like on the Duke Nukem forums and on IGN's message boards and all these places, people who like the game are being called, you know, useless fanboys and they have no idea what they're talking about and they're this and they're that. And then people who don't like the game are just essentially being called corporate mongers and there's all kinds of conspiracy theories. Uh, I'm saying people calm yourselves. It's a video game. It's obviously a video game that appeals to a certain demographic of people. It's not a game that's going to be widely received. There are a lot of groups that don't like this game. And I'm not just talking about gamers. There's a lot of rights groups that don't like this game. Because they take it too damn seriously when it's not supposed to be a serious game. It's supposed to be stupid. I mean, this game rips on the, the stereotypical male as much as it rips on any kind of a stereotypical female. But, you know, what are you going to do? As with all games, pretty much what it comes down to is play it for yourself. The naysayers do have some good points. The game is definitely not perfect. And it obviously does not show, you know, expectations were way too high. For something that's been in development this long, I knew it was not going to be a masterpiece. And that's why, that's probably why I honestly found it enjoyable. People who enjoy the game and like the game will continue to enjoy it and probably get a lot of good playtime out of it. Multiplayer, yeah, it's nothing new, but it's fun. I've played a few rounds of Team Deathmatch, and it's fun. It's your basic shooter game. Will the online community be as dedicated as Call of Duty? I doubt it. But it's not bad. And then the, pe you know, and then the people who don't like the game will play it. I, you know, it's sad that they're disappointed in it, but it's not meeting up to their expectations, and they won't play it again.
or you know whatever they decide what they want to do with it so calm yourself people <laughs> it's been a week since the game has come out and these topics are still coming up now i'm sorry i just kind of ended up ranting but i just figured i would get my voice out there it's by no means perfect but it's not a horrible game and there is DLC coming out. There's a lot of rumors that there's actually a bunch of single-player levels they're going to release for it. I don't know what's going to go on with that. Nothing's been confirmed. Uh, I, I hope so, because, like I said, I personally did enjoy the single-player campaign for the most part. Although I'm in the middle of my damn I'm good run on PC, and oh my god is it hard. But that's, So I may end up hating the game by the end of that. <laughs> but that's a different story. So... That's about it. Uh, if you actually stuck through and watched this whole thing, thank you very much. If not, I don't blame you because all this stuff has been said a million times before. So uh, thanks a lot for bearing with me, and I will see you guys around. Take care.